In the last lecture, we created our project with Create React App. In this lecture, we are going to get an understanding of the folder structure that is being created by Create React App. And as I mentioned, your npm start process should be running whenever you are writing your own code. I now open the folder which was created by Create React App in my Visual Studio code. This is the ID I'm going to use throughout the course, but you can use any ID or editor you want to use. For example, WebStorm would be an alternative or Sublime or Atom or any editor, editor you like. So let's walk through all the files and the folders we have here. On the root, on the root level, we got a couple of configuration files. These log files can basically be ignored. These are looking into the versions of the dependencies we are using. The general dependencies of our project has are defined in the project in the package.js file. Here you can see these three dependencies in this project, which was created by create react. App. As you can see, we obviously import react here. I'm using the latest version of the react. Same way is the React DOM and React Scripts. React Scripts is a package offering all the build flow, the development server, the next generation JavaScript feature support, and all these things we are using in this project. In the package.json file, there are a couple of scripts defined. You can run these scripts with npm run and then add the script name like this if you want to run npm run start npm run build npm run test along with all the dependencies which we have defined by the react script package here the exception starts which you can also run with npm start the command which we executed and you can see it uses the react script package to then execute some command and that's simply a command that package makes available and this command happens to start this development server it will watch all your code your comp the compile it will compile your code or optimize your code and do all these things once you're ready for deploying our or your app you would run npm run build to optimize it even more it does not launch the development server, but instead get your code optimized, stored in a folder because um, right now we don't see your compiled code anywhere here. Everything happens in the memory. So let's close this package or JSON file for now. We have this node modules folder, which holds all the dependencies and sub dependencies of our project. We only had React, React DOMs, and React Scripts, but React Scripts has a lot of other dependencies. All these little build tools which compile the code and so on. You shouldn't edit anything in the node modules folder. It's, it's generated automatically. If you run npm install in your project folder, this will automatically done by create React Scripts. The next folder is public folder which is very interesting to see. It's basically the root folder which gets served by the web server in the end. Though here it only holds the files we can edit, the scripts file are added in the source folder. Here we got the one important file which is index.html file. This is the normal index page and it is the single page we have here. We will never add more HTML pages in this project. If you are creating a multi-page project, you would create multiple such projects here with create react app. You wouldn't add more HTML files here or you need your own workflow if you want to do that. I want to highlight this div here with the root ID. This is because this will become uh, important because this will be uh, where we actually mount our react application later. But if you want to add any other imports like say other libraries, CSS libraries, or you want to add some meta tags, you can do it in your HTML file. But again, you probably want to do it this with React. The manifest.json file is there because create React apps gives us a progressive web app out of the box. A very basic one at least. And 
gives us this manifest or JSON file where we can add some metadata about our application. Interesting for us is this source folder. Here we got a couple of files and these are actually the files we will be working on and this is actually our React application. Most important for us right now is the index.js file. This file gets access to, the, to this root element in our DOM. Which, which we saw in the index.html file. This ID with the DOM. This, I, uh, this root ID. What will happen is this is a reference of some app object or elements which we want to import from the uh, which we want to import into the index.html file. Here we have some of the uh, import statements. Um, these don't have these don't have the .js extensions because that is automatically added by our build flow. And if we have to look into this app.js file and, and this is where our first code and only react component we have in this starting project right now this in this uh, app.js we can see a couple of jsx syntax and we will dive deeply into what we hear exactly in the next lectures for now let's remove all the content in this wrapping div And let's simply add a H1 tag. With some information in it. And let's save it. Since you have your npm start running. And this will be automatically trigger pre-compilation. And it should automatically re reload your page too. That is why you should see. This is create react course, this uh, which was uh, which was replaced by the uh, which was replaced by the old content which we have. With that, we can uh, also remove this logo dot svg file. We no longer use it in our project. Now we got a bit of linear source folder and now what else did react uh, create react app create for us. It gives us this app.css file which basically defines our styling we will use in this uh, app.js file and though I will say these are not scoped to this file only these are still global stylings and I will actually remove everything uh, apart from this text and center the next file is service worker.js file it's the same it's an as a name implies it registered the service worker which is generated automatically that's related to this progressive web app we got out of our box uh, it will basically pre-cache our script files we don't need to configure anything here this is the test file. Other file is the test file app.js.test and we will dive into the testing later in the course. It basically allows us to create the unit test cases for the different units or the, for the different cases. For example, components in our application. This is a general setup and for the majority of this course, we will work in app.js file and then we will create a new component. Um, and uh, after that, we will dive into the JSX understanding of the JSX and we will um, see how we can add more components in our upcoming videos. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.